wake up. If there's anything that is important for you to remember from these videos today is that we are at the end of the line. We are doing exactly what Gorbachev wants. Consolidation. Now, this is an interesting cartoon. This is regional government. This is the consolidation of schools, basically. And you see the little guy in the one room schoolhouse, he's chewing a piece of grass or something. And he looks very happy. He belongs to Little Frog Lick Creek High School. He's chewing the grass with a smile. If you follow him through, you're going to see him looking more and more miserable as they merge his one room schoolhouse to a six room schoolhouse to eight more schools and then into a central school, which is a region. Uh, and then you're going to see him at the end. He's holding his left arm out, up like this, clenched fist, little hair, very unhappy. Cold. And his t-shirt says, Our Lady of the Benevolent Dictatorship, One World Global Training Corps. And then the last one, he has on earphones, you know, like you guys have all the time. Finally, he's smiling. He's connected to something with a wire. And it says, Interplanetary Carbon Unit Reprogramming Pod. Well, I saw that in a very liberal left education journal called Phi Delta Kappa. Many people will recognize that, 1983. The title of it is Consolidation, going from the small school to the central regionalized school, and uh, which is what regional government is all about and you know you can get rid of the, all the parochial views that the children have in the little school where the parents can go you know the school board meeting is just across the street the school and all the parents know each other the teacher you know it's a lovely atmosphere and then you end up with all the children going long distances on the bus which is no good for them to the regional school and then you have country boys and girls who are being mixed with city boys and girls. So then they get into the drug scene. So we've seen with consolidation that the test scores go down, the drug problem gets worse, the cost of education increases, although they tell you that consolidation is to make it cheaper. A lot of people just don't understand the word consolidation. Consolidation is consolidating all the services together under the guise of this is going to be cheaper for you. But in the process, what happens is you lose all your elected officials because all of these entities are being merged. So at the local level, you don't have any representation anymore. And ultimately, you spend far more. That's the whole restructuring of our constitutional form of government, is being thrown to the wolves in favor of this regionalism and consolidation system in every area, education, uh, you know, government bureaucracy to make things cheaper, uh, you name it. Uh, planning, the word is central planning. That's the Soviet system, central planning, regionalism. No matter how beautiful everything looks outside, no matter how good those restaurants are in your town or the good funny movies or the whatever, no matter whatever beautiful things you see in your life and your family, et cetera, et cetera, folks, it's curtains. October 24, 1975, the World Affairs Council uh, of Philadelphia issued a Declaration of Interdependence written by well-known historian and liberal think tank Aspen Institute board member Henry Steele Commager. This alarming document, which called to mind President Kennedy's July 4, 1962 speech calling for a Declaration of Interdependence, Kennedy, huh? was written as a contribution to our nation's celebration of its 200th birthday and signed by 125 members of the U.S. Senate and House. When in the course of history the threat of extinction confronts mankind, it is necessary for the people of the United States to declare their interdependence with the people of all nations and to embrace those principles and build those institutions which will enable mankind to survive and civilization to flourish. Two centuries ago, our forefathers brought forth a new nation. Now we must join with others to bring forth a new world order. We affirm that the economy of all nations is a seamless web 
and that no one man can any longer effectively maintain its processes of production and monetary systems without recognizing the necessity for collaborative regulation by international authorities. This little blue book is called Conclusions and Recommendations, and it has a weird title, and you'd think it only deals with social studies, but it doesn't. It's the report of the Commission on the Social Studies. It was funded by the Carnegie Corporation. And the book virtually recommends that the curriculum all be geared towards the Soviet system, internationalism, planned economy, etc. It's been referred to by a leading British uh, professor of British socialism as a a plan for a socialist America. This book is at my son's website, americandeception.com, thank heavens, because this is the only copy that exists in the whole world, right here. All right, so that's dated 1934. And, and what they're doing there is they're, they're really talking about putting in a planned economy. So that's what we're putting in right now with the, the program that's just going into our little school in Dresden, Maine. We've put in the DiLorenzo Reinventing Schools uh, plan, which I said earlier, uh, your, your, kids, your children will be graduating at 14 or 21. No grades, no ABCD, no kindergarten through 12th grade, because it's going to all be workforce training and the curriculum will be based on the Malcolm Baldrige Total Quality Management Award that has only in the past been given to Cadillac and Hilton Hotels and things like that. The Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award gets results. We're not there yet. We're continuously improving and it's something that is so deep in our organization that the concepts and principles of Baldrige will be applied forever here. So this same Carnegie Corporation in 1933 instituted the eight-year study, which went on until 1941. That's the Skinner method, performance-based, results-based. That's all what you, what you can do, not what you know in your head. They don't want children to think or know anything, no history. No. It's what you can do for the good of the global economy. And uh, the Education Commission of the States, a very important unconstitutional regional entity which controls education in every state as well they had a little newsletter that I used to get and one day I was reading it and my eyes went down to the bottom of the page and I said something it said it said outcomes based education is and of course I'd always been fighting outcomes based education and it said it's was experimented with for eight years in the 1930s and 40s by the Carnegie Corporation. It was called the eight-year study. So nothing's new, folks. If we think the outcomes-based education, that we, which, which is the biggest dumbing down education system that ever happened with children graduating at 14, right? Uh, if we think that it's new, no. It came from the eight-year study, which again was Carnegie. Okay. Now Carnegie, we might as well mention this at the same time. 1965, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. Carnegie was all involved in paying for the national assessment, which is all 60% politically correct. That's the test that all schools around the country have had to give for the past, ever since 1965. Now it is 60% politically correct. Your kids' ideas on uh, global warming, sustainable development, a world government, the fact that constitutions outmoded, all that. So they paid for the national assessment. They were the ones instrumental in putting up the money for the Education Commission of the states in Denver. In your Senate Education Committee, in your state, there's always going to be one person who is on the membership of the uh, Education Commission of the states. So there'd be about 50 state people. So they get their orders from the Education Commission of the states. That's Carnegie, paid for that. In 1985, Carnegie signed an agreement with the, with the Soviet Academy of Science. At the same time, Reagan signed the agreements with Gorbachev to merge the two education systems. Carnegie uh, signed with the Academy of Science to develop computer courseware for elementary schools dealing with critical thinking. That was an agreement signed. That's for our children, right? In first grade, critical thinking on the computer. Reagan, Clinton, the two Bushes and all 
implement the school to work agenda. That was the beginning of the planned economy under Reagan.